Um, first off, I want to uh, welcome you all and thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, while this is different than uh, our usual very hot fair outside in, in Tuscaloosa that I've been doing for many years, we're excited to be able to do this and connect with you virtually. And I uh, want to thank um, the University of Alabama Education Abroad Office and Brooke especially for, for helping us out with this to facilitate it. Um, my name is John Hilton and I work with AIFS Study Abroad. And what we'd like to do is give you a brief overview of our programs and also allow some time for you to ask questions afterwards. Um, if you have questions while we're going through the presentation, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And um, either my colleague Jackie or uh, Brooke will be able to um, respond to them. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and begin with our power, the PowerPoint presentation I have for AIFS. Um, give me just a moment. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, I'm John Hilton. Uh, I am a, an alumnus of the AIFS Florence program in Italy. I was a student there um, 20, 20 how many years ago? Let's see. Um, Is my screen sharing? All right. How about now? Okay. All right. Um, and I've been working with AIFS uh, for 15 years. Actually, today is my 15th anniversary with AIFS. So I'm quite excited about that. And um, I had a great experience as a student and I've been able to work with many students who have also had great experiences. Um, we send a lot of students abroad from University of Alabama. Uh, we are the number one study abroad provider for students at University of Alabama and uh, we've got a great relationship with the office. Um, I want to go through quickly some of the things that set AIFS apart. Uh, we have study abroad programs throughout the world and on all of our programs, Paul Bess, Housing is uh, guaranteed and arranged by AIFS. Um, comprehensive insurance is included on your program. Uh, there's a meal plan that's included on each location and that varies by program, whether uh, it be a, a meal plan at local restaurants or in a dining hall or with your host family, depending on your choice of housing options. Um, we offer a, a load of excursions for each program that are included. There are also some optional programs uh, for excursions. Um, there are activities basically daily uh, for you to do and we have resident staff on site that are responsible for the administration of the programs and they set up everything and I can tell you one of the things that really sets AIFS apart uh, is our resident staff. They've been with us for many years and in uh, a lot of cases they've been with us decades. My resident director in Florence uh, has been there since 1984 and she's still our resident director. Um, so they are really great resources and they can do pretty much anything you need. Um, if you have any emergency, they, they have emergency cell phones 24 seven and um, also any sort of um, advice you need about traveling or cultural integration, um, they're really great resources. Another unique AIFS feature is that we offer round trip airfare for our students. It's not required that you purchase it through us, but about 50% of our students do. And it's a good option because for all of the European locations, with the exception of London, it includes a London stopover. And you get to see um, London, so you get to stay there for two nights and you get guided sightseeing towards the city. So that's a really neat option. Um, I mentioned the comprehensive insurance that's included, that is health and travel insurance. This is a, a list of the countries uh, where we offer study abroad programs. I should note that in most of these countries, we have multiple locations. Um, for example, when you look at Spain, we have programs in Barcelona, which is quite a popular option for Alabama students. We also have programs in Valencia, Madrid, Granada, Salamanca, um, and I think that's all. I may be missing one. Um, Sevilla. Sevilla, thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to highlight at the bottom here, the multi-destination travel programs. That's been another very popular option for Alabama students. Um, we have a number of different programs that travel throughout Europe. Each has a different academic theme and travels for about three weeks to different cities. Um, and that's a neat way to see a lot of Europe um, if you have not traveled before. 
Um, these are just some questions we typically recommend students ask um, as you are considering where you may want to go. All of our programs are open to all majors, so you're not required to be any one major to go to any location. Um, also, with a very few exceptions, our programs are open to complete beginners in the language of the, pro of the location where you'd be studying. I always tell students that when I got on the plane to go to Italy, the extent of my Italian was Florian spaghetti. Um, so I did not know much Italian and um, I made out well. I, I was required to take a beginning Italian course, but then I was a history major and my history courses that I took were taught in English. So that's the case in many of our locations. If you do speak a language at a high enough level that you are capable of taking a course in that level uh, or in, the, in that language, that is an option in many locations. Um, so think about what kind of setting you want to be in. Do you want to be in a big city or a smaller town? Would you like to be um, with a host family or in an apartment or live on campus? Would you like to be near the ocean or would you like to be near the mountains? Um, that's a, some ways to kind of begin framing your, your um, discussion with the study abroad office and also your family if anyone um, you know, has input on, on where you're going. Um, we offer programs for the full semester and academic year. You can go for a fall or spring semester or the full year. You can go for the summer and those range anywhere from two to 12 weeks. Um, and we also have a January term program that's run from two to three weeks over um, between Christmas and the beginning of the academic year. Um, Global Experiences is our sister organization that my colleague Carl will present to you on uh, in just a few moments, uh, but they have internship programs throughout the world that allow you to intern abroad for credit um, while you are studying abroad, and he'll go into more details about those. We offer community engagement programs throughout the world for students who are interested in those. Um, and those oftentimes can be hands-on with um, students at a school or with um, people in refugee camps. Uh, there's a lot of different options for those. Uh, for our volunteering, um, you can volunteer in just about every location we offer. And some of those offerings are actually for credit, um, but most are not for credit. They're just an optional volunteer that you can do that uh, will be reflected in many cases on your transcript. Um, as I mentioned, the programs are open to all majors. Um, you should begin planning. The earlier you begin planning, the more opportunities you can leave for yourself. And um, the Study Abroad Office is a great resource to work through the credits that you, that you may want to save for your study abroad. You should also speak with your academic advisor. Um, as I mentioned, no previous language of foreign, uh, previous knowledge of foreign language is required. Um, I mentioned the excursions and activities outside of the classroom. You can see there's basically limitless options that are set up by the on-site staff for you um, that really add a lot to the experience. Um, these are some of the examples of, of the excursions that are available on different programs. Again, these are all highlighted by a program on our website. Um, Again, I don't really have time to run through all these questions, but we can go through them. And I should also point out, we'd be happy to connect with you afterwards if you have any, if you have any questions. Um, cannot recommend study abroad enough. Um, it is a great experience. It, it certainly changed my life. And I think that most students that I know who have studied abroad would say the same thing. They'd say it changed their life, their lives for the positive. It also sets you apart when you go to apply for a job. Um, AIFS has been around since 1964, and we've sent over a million and a half students abroad. Um, we have a broad network throughout the world of um, representatives, so we have a pretty broad reach, and it gives us flexibility to provide students with a great experience. Um, that being said, uh, you have a lot of options for scholarships and grants on the AIFS Study Abroad page. You can find all those details under financial aid, we accept all financial aid. You'll have to speak with the study abroad office and your academic advisor as to whether your financial aid or scholarships will transfer to study abroad. Many at University of Alabama will, but again, each student is different. So it is important that you speak with them early on to discuss the possibility of your financial aid transferring. Um, here's some more kind of quick points about studying abroad. Um, this tells, this is, our website, um, you can email us at AIF, info at AIFS.com. 
Um, you can live chat with us through the website. You can also connect with us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram. Our handle is AI, at AIFSabroad.com. And this is my email address. Uh, you're also more than welcome to contact me. Um, I'd be happy to, to speak with you directly or to email with you as you please. Um, sorry for having run through that so quickly, but I do want to leave time for my colleague Carl and also for some questions. So now I'm going to turn it over to Carl Jacobs, um, who is representative with Global Experiences, which is our sister organization that does internships. Carl? Thank you, John. Yes, so I represent Global Experiences, and we are a sister organization under the AIFS for Bringing Programs. I and mean, we operate just like a study abroad program does. However, in lieu of taking courses full time, you're doing a full time unpaid internship. So I'm just going to share my screen here and go through my presentation. So we go there. So Global Experiences, just in short, we focus on international internships. Um, lately, we've been doing virtual internships as well as in-person opportunities. So I'm happy to discuss both options um, with anybody who's interested in. Um, right now, I'm just going to go briefly through why interning abroad is important, um, the benefits, um, talk a little bit about GE, who we are, and a little bit about how our process works. Because while we are a sister organization of AIFS, our application process is a little different. So the benefits of interning abroad are pretty straightforward in the sense that you get all the benefits of your standard internship. You get to apply those skills that you've learned in the classroom, um, but now you get to do it in an intercultural office in a global setting. Um, you navigate new uh, issues within intercultural workspaces. Um, and I always think, I always say too, if you really wanna experience a foreign culture, uh, work there because you really will be put in the thick of it pretty quickly about how things are done. Um, one thing that employers are looking for, we base all of our internships around the NACE uh, guidelines for internships. Um, so we try to address all of these uh, skills that are what employers say are the most desirable traits on resumes. Um, with our, our experience, we found that most of our interns, um, the feedback from the employers is they say that they're earning a lot of experience in people management, coordinating with others, um, negotiation skills are always improved, um, emotional intelligence is a big one. I think working in a different cult, uh, culture really expands your um, horizon, your view of how people uh, treat each other, their emotions, treat all of this in a workspace. Um, just to move on and talk briefly about global experiences, we've not been around as long as AIFS, um, but we have been around since 2001, and we have been focusing on internships abroad since 2001. Um, with our program, we provide one-on-one -on -one individualized pre-departure programming. Um, so you get an advisor, we review your professional documents, you get coaching for your interview, um, you talk to your advisor about what you want to do in an internship, we try to match you based on your interests. Um, so you're not left, you know, out in the weeds by yourself. Um, if you want to work on your Spanish, but you're not comfortable interviewing in Spanish, that's fine. We can take that into consideration as well. Um, because like I said, everything is one on one, it's individualized. And um, we try to tailor it as much to you and your professional goals as much as possible. Um, one of the big uh, the nice things about our program too is that we do have the virtual options um, because I did see a question in the chat earlier about how COVID is affecting travel. I can tell you shortly, it is immensely affecting travel. Um, but one thing that has been nice is um, we have the virtual option. So you don't lose out on your opportunity. We've had a lot of employers enjoying switching to the virtual option because travel was not possible. Um, so it's nice that we have that flexibility now. I um, mean, we do have a post program that's available, you can get certified on LinkedIn, things like that, because why have an internship if you can't put it on your resume? Uh, so where can you go with GE? Uh, we have just expanded our options. We've now added Edinburgh, Scotland, and Galway, Ireland to our list of cities. Um, we are mostly based in Europe, but if you do wanna go outside of Europe, we have sites available in Sydney, as well as San Jose, Costa Rica, and we operate in the US in New York City and Washington, DC. Um, in all locations, it's all the same programs. You still get housing, you still have on-site staff, you still have the professional development and the guidance that goes along with it. Um, our program, instead of being based on your majors, your courses, things that you wanna do, if you're accepted to GE, you're accepted for your career fields. Uh, so when you fill out an application, that's the first thing we'll ask you, which two career fields do you want to intern in? And um, we group them based on business, creative STEM, 
uh, communication, social impact. One that's not there is we have a fairly large fashion program. Uh, one of our original programs in 2001 was placing fashion interns um, in Milan and Florence. So that's one of our oldest and uh, most developed programs um, that's left off that list. Um, our application, you can just go online to our website. There'll be an application there. You just fill out the two pages and you will be forwarded to me. I am the admissions counselor for all University of Alabama applicants. Um, I work closely with the Education Abroad Office, um, so I'm familiar with your advisors and we are in communication to make sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. Um, just a little bit about how our placement process works. Um, if you're accepted, like I said, you're getting a guaranteed internship within your field, um, but we're still matchmaking you based on your interest and your skill set. And we don't want to leave somebody in an internship that they feel uncomfortable in or are not prepared for. Um, so your program advisor will work with you, set up the interview, um, but it's the employer's decision on whether or not they hire you. You have to interview with the employer. You have to be approved by them. And that's why we offer you all of that coaching. And then once that's confirmed, then you're ready to go. It's the final step in the process. Um, so what's included in our program? Um, our professional development program is also in our virtual program called GE Virtuoso. Um, so you're getting your guaranteed placement. We use the Gallup Clifton Strengths. Um, that's part of our professional development program. You get personal advising, there are welcome orientations, there are check-ins, and um, we definitely do not leave you, you know, alone at your internship. There'll be local staff that will check in on you. Um, and then the in-person internships have all of the virtual perks, plus our housing. We have social events, day trips, um, there are professional mixers, and you also get travel medical insurance as well. Um, with academic credit, sometimes it's a bit tricky with internships. Um, so one option is through the University of Alabama. Like I said, I work closely with your advisors, um, so we can definitely talk a bit more about that later um, if anybody's interested in that. The other option also is we have transfer credit available. Um, sometimes career fields fall between the um, two different fields, things like that. Um, so we have a variety of options available. Um, just to briefly run through these with frequently asked questions, the biggest one we get is, is the internship paid? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Um, there are foreign tax laws and visa restrictions, so that is not something we can guarantee. We've had interns in the past that were offered, you know, gifts. Um, they were taken to lunch, things like that. Um, so that's fine. Um, but as far as payment goes, it's not possible. Um, you are working full time, so expect to work 30 to 40 hours. Um, that does change depending on the location, but that is something to keep in mind. Um, and then as far as choosing the company, like I said, you don't apply for a specific internship, you're applying for a career field. Uh, so after you enroll, you'd be working with that advisor um, to help place you and match you with an employer that fits your goals and your skill set. Um, and then I would ask questions here, but I think we'll save those. And then you can always find us on social media. <laughs> All right, I think John is still muted. Oh. Thanks so much, Carl. Um, and, and thank you all again for, for taking the time to join us. Um, the first question that, that Xavier asked is one that I'm sure is no doubt on everyone's mind, and that's a question about the COVID impact. Um, unfortunately, COVID has, uh, as Carl mentioned, it's, it's kind of devastated uh, the, the travel um, industry and study abroad. However, um, we were able to very quickly and effectively bring all of our spring 2020 students home. We brought, um, you know, uh, thousands of students home from all over the world in a very short period of time uh, and safely, which, um, you know, was a challenge, but we were happy to be able to do it. We've been doing little other than planning for um, study abroad when COVID, uh, the COVID situation allows it. Um, and what I can tell you is that we are, planning to follow the local regulations of each uh, country and, and city where our students will be traveling. So if that place mandates um, social distancing, mask wearing, um, whatever those things may be, we will follow those. And we won't send students abroad until um, we're able to, to do so you know, safely and the government uh, of the United States has um, lowered their, their, travel, their travel restrictions. Um, for, for certain countries. Um, so yes, it very much is on our mind. Um, one important thing I want to address about that, we have added the option for students to purchase um, an optional um, K-12 
cancel for any reason slash interrupt for any reason insurance insurance policy um, for all of our students. Um, what this does is allows you to uh, withdraw for a program for reason and, and or if you're on site and a program was to be canceled, um, you can recruit a certain amount of, of the uh, non-recoverable expenses that you had paid through that insurance policy. Um, you can find more details about that on our webpage, um, and I can also drop them in the chat after, after a few minutes, um, a, a link to it. Um, but that's something that uh, obviously we hope we never have to go through again, but we're very well aware that we may, and um, we're certainly very prepared for it as well this time. Um, let me see. Uh, I wonder, wonder if there's any other questions. Does anyone have any questions about kind of your, your specific situation? If you have a certain uh, major that you're trying to fulfill courses for, um, if there's a certain location that you're interested in studying abroad in, um, we'd be happy to, to address those as, as best possible. Um, we have not sent anyone abroad since COVID, Ariel. Um, unfortunately, the United States State Department only recently with, uh, lifted the global level four travel warning, which is essentially a, a, a do not travel. Um, and we are still planning on having our January term 2021 and spring 2021 programs. Um, but that is a fluid situation. And of course, that may change. Uh, we, may, we may be required to, um, to cancel those programs or adjust them. Um, uh, a semester in Madrid. Um, well, what I can tell you about our costs, this is another thing that is unique to AIFS. All of our program fees are guaranteed in US dollars. So you see exactly what the cost will be. And once we print those costs, they will not fluctuate for the term that they're for which they're printed. Um, that helps you uh, to plan a lot. Um, Jackie, if you could drop the, uh, the fees in, um, the link to the fees for Madrid. Um, but on each of our, uh, of our web pages, we list the program fee very upfront. Um, so we're very transparent about it. And we also indicate exactly what's included and what's not included. Um, so it helps you to plan and be aware. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, Jackie will drop on the, the cost for the Madrid program um, in a moment. And Carl just listed the, the dates for, um, for GE or the tuition for GE. Um, a couple of programs I do want to highlight uh, just because I know so many University of Alabama students have, have participated in the past. Uh, I mentioned Barcelona earlier. Um, that one is without a doubt a very popular location. Um, Florence in Italy, uh, my alma mater is also a very popular one. And um, my uh, another one, I mentioned the traveling programs during the summer. Um, one that is very popular for Alabama is uh, the Fashion Marketing Merchandising Program. And that goes, um, it starts in London and then you go to Paris, uh, Milan and Florence. And that's over the course of about three or four weeks. And uh, we've had a number of, of Alabama students on that one. Um, the European Art and Culture Program, that is another popular one that travels. Uh, it goes London, Amsterdam, Paris, um, Lausanne, Switzerland, Venice, Florence, and Rome over the course of three or four weeks, which is a really great way to see Europe. I actually worked on that program a number of years ago now, and it's, it's a fabulous option. Let's see. Um, while we are, are waiting on a couple other questions, um, I will encourage you again to reach out to the study abroad office, the education abroad office there at Alabama. Uh, they're in B.B. Comer Hall um, if you are on campus and um, they are really helpful. Um, they, they're one of the best offices that we work with and we have, we are affiliated with about 420 universities throughout the United States and Alabama's study abroad office is one of the best we work with. Um, so, so they're very helpful. I'm sure they'll be, be happy to work with you. I mentioned briefly that we do offer scholarships um, and I'm going to drop in Paul, can you address uh, Xavier's question? Anything medical based apart? Uh, when you say medical based, I'm assuming you're referring to placements or? 
like placements within the medical field. Yeah, um, so the placements in the medical field can be difficult. Um, I think the important thing uh, when considering an internship, really in any field, but especially also when going abroad, is what that looks like first here in the US. Um, so medical is pretty private. You don't have access, you as an intern won't have access to patient information. Um, so anything that is medical ba medic, medically based would be research focused, um, more around the biology route. Um, we have a lot in ecology and biology, um, research internships that are really cool in Dublin and in Galway. And that's why we opened that program in Galway is because there's really a lot of good stuff there. Um, if you are looking to, I don't want to say practice patient relations, um, but you do want some access to the local population, we have some social services internships in Ireland as well. Um, because of the lack of a language barrier, those have been pretty successful there. Um, but again, that process can be a little bit longer because you will have to do like a criminal background check and things like that beforehand. Um, Xavier, one, one program I'll mention for AIFS that we're quite excited about um, is our medical Spanish immersion program in Buenos Aires. And that actually offers students the opportunity to do a clinical rotation at a private hospital there in Buenos Aires. Um, I see your face. I thought the same thing when, we, when I learned about it. Um, it's, uh, and that's, I should say, that's one of my favorite locations of ours. I've visited a couple times and I'm a big fan of Argentina. Um, but it requires it a level of at least upper intermediate Spanish. Um, so you, you do need to be able to speak, uh, you know, a, a decent level of, of Spanish to be able to do that. But you also take a course that is um, specifically geared towards students who plan to pursue a medical, uh, you know, a medical career or a health related career. Um, and the, they'll put you in the appropriate language level for that. And we're very excited about that one because it's, uh, it's the only place where we are able to offer a clinical intern or clinical rotation. Um, and students who have done it so far have been quite, quite happy with it. Um, it is a limited size program. You know, I think we are capped at something around eight or 10 students per summer. Um, it is just in the summer, um, but um, it's, a, it's a very nice private hospital. Um, it's Hospital Britannico uh, in the, a little bit more Southern part of the city. And you go there in the morning and do your rotations in the morning. And then there is a private bus that takes our group back up to University of Belgrano to take your course in the afternoon. Then I'm just gonna jump in here real quick, John. There was a question about uh, supporting documents provided for internships. Um, and for that one, I will say simply for the GE application, all you need is your resume. And um, we do have a short answer question there about your program goals. That's less admissions, more placement, just what are you looking to do and do we think that's feasible? Um, if you do have a career field that's writing focused, like journalism, PR, um, those are the two big ones. A writing sample is encouraged. Um, if you have a field like fashion design, graphic design, web design, any design, um, any kind of portfolio is beneficial and usually required as well. Um, I can say the, I, th I don't know if you need more documents for the education abroad application, um, but you definitely do need um, to go through that process as well. Thanks, Carl. I know we have to wrap up right at, at 3.30 local time here. So I just wanna thank you all again and thank Brooke for hosting us. Um, and I want to leave you with the thought um, that I really cannot encourage you enough to pursue study abroad, uh, regardless of what program you choose, whether it's AIFS or another program or what location you go. Uh, the main thing is that we want you to go. And uh, most students have a, a fantastic experience. And I, I hope the same for you all. And please feel free to reach out to, to any of us with any questions you may have. I'm just going to second that. I would also highly recommend studying abroad. I was a product of it myself and interning abroad, so it's definitely uh, it's really going to be a great experience. Thank you all so much at AIFS and GE for coming and talking with us today. I think everybody had a good time. Like they said, be, feel free to reach out to our office, studyabroad at ua.edu if you didn't get anything answered today or reach out to them directly. I think we all throw y'all's um, information in the chat window as well, so then go ahead and copy it. Um, I mentioned earlier in the chat, everything will be available on our website. So you'll get a recorded version of all the presentations and the Q&A afterwards. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks so much, Brooke. Bye.